There will be 10 questions on engine block diagnosis and repair on the test. This top area of the short block, the area where the head gasket rests, is called the deck. The deck is checked for warpage using a straight edge and a feeler gauge at six different spots. Six different spots. The maximum allowable warpage here is four thousandths of an inch. The feeler gauge should not slide under any of the mating surfaces and the straight edge. So far so good. Moving on to the cylinder. It has two major wear areas. The first one is going to be on the thrust side of the cylinder wall. The other is going to be at the top of piston travel. There's a spot at the very top of the cylinder that does not wear. This piston is at top dead center, but between the top of the piston and the top compression ring, there's this small area, small area that does not contact the cylinder wall. There's nothing to wear that spot down. As the cylinder wears, a ridge forms in this top area of the cylinder. Before removing the pistons, that ridge must be removed with a ridge reamer. Otherwise, during piston removal, the ridge can break a piston ring and damage the ring groove. I cannot feel the ridge on this particular cylinder, so we should be fine during piston removal. There's two measurements to know, cylinder taper and cylinder out of round. To calculate cylinder taper, measure the diameter of the cylinder below the ring ridge and measure again at the bottom of the cylinder, near the bottom of the cylinder. Subtracting those two numbers gives the amount of taper. To calculate at a round, measure the diameter of the cylinder parallel to the crankshaft, under the ring ridge area once again, then take another measurement perpendicular to the crankshaft under the ring ridge area. The difference between the two measurements is the amount of out of round. If the out of round is above specifications, there will be too much blow by and excess oil consumption. To fix an out of round cylinder, the cylinder will need to be bored oversized and the pistons replaced with oversized pistons. Another alternative is engine replacement. If one cylinder needs to be bored, then it is recommended that all cylinders are bored in order to keep output equal. When removing main caps, loosen the bolts in the reverse order of tightening. Loosen first, then go back and remove. This will prevent crankshaft warpage. Main caps should be marked. They need to go back in their original position. If not, the crankshaft could be damaged. This engine has all the main caps as one piece known as the girdle. This piece usually has an arrow that needs to point towards the front of the engine. The connecting rod caps should also be labeled. The connecting rod and the cap are created as one piece. Then they are cracked, separated. This creates a unique pairing of the rod and cap. So every rod and cap pairing has a unique mating surface. You cannot interchange the rod caps. Also, you cannot put the rod cap on backwards. Interchanging the cap or putting it on backwards will damage the rod and cap's bearing and can damage the crankshaft's journal. Some connecting rod and caps are keyed and they will only go in one way. If they're not labeled from the factory, use a number punch to label it and keep these parts together once the piston comes out. The next measurements are done with the cylinder at specification and usually with new piston rings and a clean piston. To calculate piston to cylinder wall clearance, measure the diameter of the piston, 90 degrees to the center line of the piston pin. 90 degrees to the center line of the piston pin. Subtract that measurement from the cylinder wall diameter to obtain the piston to wall clearance. If the clearance is above specification, you will hear piston slap on a cold engine. Next is the piston ring end gap measurement. You're going to measure that gap. The piston ring is placed into the cylinder 
and you're gonna push it down with the piston without any rings to square it the manufacturer decides how deep it's gonna go this particular ring has an end gap specification of between six and ten thousandths of an inch I can fit in a feeler gauge blade that measures 11 thousandths of an inch so obviously this is not at specifications the old pistons are still in there and the cylinder wall has not been reconditioned but doing that could bring all of this to specifications too wide of an end gap can result in compression loss too narrow of an end gap can result in the end scuffing or even ring breakage last is a ring groove clearance measurement use a filler gauge to measure the clearance between the piston ring and the ring groove this particular ring has a specification of between two and three thousandths of an inch a four thousandths of an inch blade is barely fitting in between the groove too much clearance can cause the ring to break too little can cause the ring to bind which will lead to compression loss each ring has its own specification i'll end the video with two official aac practice questions one thing to note this video was created before taking the actual a1 test so if you're going to take the test soon good luck and have a good day